Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to all of you. Whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This is a great day of celebration in the life of First Congregational United Church of Christ, and we are thrilled that you have joined us. A few rubrics before we begin. We invite you to silence your cell phones, and please do check that. Almost always one ring, even though I've said the announcement. This service is being recorded and will be on the First Congregational website later on today or tomorrow, depending on when our dear Matt can get to it. The restrooms are located at the end of this building. If you do not want to walk in front of everybody, you can go out the door and through a side door to get to the restroom. Uh, but that's where they are. We have many people to thank today for making this possible. The Bissell family, of course. Troy Kilborn and Troy, would you stand, please? Uh, from Classic Organs, California. Yes. Dr. Peter and Marion Edwards, where are you if you'll stand? and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the king. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor Yahweh with praise. It is a good thing to give thanks to God. Praise God with timbrel and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with resounding cymbals. Praise God with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you dwell among angels who praise you continually. You open our mouths to sing salvation's new song. Your spirit is the breath of such music. We praise you for giving us this organ and awaken within us harmonies that lead us to worship you. Be with your servant, Daryl, who will use this beautiful instrument to make music so our spirits will be lifted in joy and we will be inspired to bring joy to others. Amen. Amen. And now, Dr. Daryl Hollinger.
It is a delight for me to play this magnificent instrument. A lot of people say, where in the world are the pipes? Mm. But this is Roger's uh, digital, imagine 235, the latest technology in digital instruments. It's interesting that each one of these tabs here represents a different sound. There are 33 of them. And they took those 33 sounds from the uh, Aeolian Skinner, a famous organ builder, and actually recorded note by note, pipe by pipe, to get these sounds here. So that's what you just heard, the Aeolian Skinner sound. Uh, so Rogers is calling that the American eclectic sound. So all these 33 engraved on these tabs are from that school of organ playing. There is more on this instrument, however. So I flip a button and all these sounds change to a different style of organ. And I flip a button and you will hear the French romantic sound. Each one of these actually changes to a different style, a different sound. So that's what this first part of the program is all about you'll get to hear, in essence, four organs in one. You just heard the American e eclectic. Uh, secondly, you're going to hear a piece from the Re French Romantic School. So those, I'll press the button and they'll change to the French organ. Then I'll press another button for this third set and they go to an English cathedral sound. And the fourth and final one, of course, is the German Baroque, which we will hear, of course, Bach on that one. Mm. So I'm going to now begin um, and going to the French Romantic School by a composer called, uh, named Louis Vierne. He is one of the leading organist composers of the modern French school. He was the organist of Notre Dame Cathedral from 1900 to his death in 1937. So Bear Seuss is a little gentle lullaby that Bjorn portrays with gentle harmonies and a rocking rhythm. So my registration, I will choose gentle flutes and uh, gentle string sounds. In addition to that, you will see me use the toe shoes here. Looks like little pedals on your car, you know? You make it go a little faster. This makes it go louder and softer. So I will use these expression pedals to get louder and softer. So you will see me working those pedals throughout this piece. So let me change some things on here and we will hear the French uh, Romantic style. It's pretty easy for me to change it, which is really cool. It happens instantaneously. Okay, so I press this button, organ type, and it changes from American Eclectic down there, French Romantic. All these sounds have now changed entirely. Bear Soups.
So now we turn to two English pieces. The pieces I chose for you are from the 18th century, and the 18th century English organ was much more delicate than its counterparts throughout Europe. It had soft, delicate sounds, and it also had no pedals, so I will just be playing with my hands. The first piece is Cornet Voluntary by John Travis, Travers. The, is, there is a slow introduction followed by a lively melody, which I will play in my right hand, and slower basses, bass notes in my left hand. So listen carefully and you will hear an echo effect as I go between the top keyboard called the swell and the great keyboard, which is called the great. The second piece is the pastoral, it's a slow, gentle piece, by Charles Wesley, who is the son of the famous Charles Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement who was known for his 6,500 hymns. So I'm going to change the sound again now to English cathedral. Press that button, this button, and presto change We are in English cathedral sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
Our next bass will be the prelude and fugue in e, e minor. It's sometimes nicknamed the cathedral. And Bach supposedly wrote this in his younger years, perhaps as early as the age of 18, some scholars think. So you'll hear the prelude first. It's a free improvisatory in nature, lots of drama and intensity. The beginning is staccato-like and followed by trilled chords, solo pedal parts adds to the drama. And then we go into the fugue, which uh, begins in one voice and you'll hear the subject. This subject is unique because it has this little tiny motif which is repeated. It goes like this, bum ba da dum Then I echo it, dum ba da dum so every time you hear that, dum -da -dum, I'll try to echo it on the other manual. And so that makes this fugue theme kind of interesting. There are, you'll hear the first subject, subject enter first, and then after that's completed, it'll enter in another voice, and the first voice continues on a little free uh, counter melody. Then a third voice enters the subject, and then the fourth, and guess what, five. This is a five voice fugue. And then after all that, that's considered the exposition. And then you have an episode where you have free material. And then we end the view again with the subjects entering. I will change now, guess what? The settings to German Baroque.
just like Bach, he wrote a lot of arrangements based on hymns of the day that people would have known. So our next section, we are going to look at modern day composers and how they treated the arrangements of hymn settings. So the first one is by Charles Orr. It's based on the 19th century hymn tune, I Love to Tell the Story. The poem was written by Catherine Hankey in 1866 and a tune composed by William Fisher. The song became a popular Sunday school song in the late 1800s. Now this arrangement uses lots of running 16th notes, lots of fast notes. The melody is subtly brought out in the top note of the 16th note passage. Or calls for a delicate four foot flute stop, which I had charmed in this piece. Now a lot of you probably, what's he talking about? I will show you in a minute. So, in essence, the music, when you put it on four foot stop, it sounds an octave higher. So let me demonstrate here. All these have a number on them. So the, the standard pitch is an eight foot. What that means is the lowest note in a real pipe organ would be eight feet long. And then it gets smaller as they go higher. Mm -hmm. So there's my eight foot principal sound. And guess what? When we do, I'm playing the same note, eight notes higher. That's a four foot. It's an acoustical phenomenon. So <laughs> when it goes in half, it goes eight notes higher, an octave higher. So a two foot is going to be two octaves higher. Mm. Right. Back to the eight foot. What happens when we go to 16? Oh. Eight notes lower. This organ even has a rumble, 32. So as I said before, this is not at that standard pitch. This is at four feet, so it's a little delicate. It's sounding eight notes an octave higher than written. Which gives a really delicate, charming sound. Still on the 
German Baroque sound, so I need to change it back to the American sound. Our next piece is Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise by Michael Burkhardt. I find Michael Burkhardt's uh, settings really innovative and creative. I had an uh, opportunity to go to one of his workshops and I love buying his organ music and getting some ideas from his inventive uh, organ style of playing. In this case, uh, Michael Burkhardt uses the Baroque technique called the Ritornello, which is a short reoccurring theme. And he took a Baroque theme, some of you might remember it, remind, right, might remember it. Uh, it is Vivaldi's Gloria, don't be, you know that one? Yeah, they'll start singing and watch it. <laughs> right, and that is interspersed with the uh, hymn tune, Immortal, Invisible. Another piece uh, written, arranged by Michael Burkhart is Now Thank We All Our God. It is a triumphant hymn of thanksgiving written by Martin Rinkert, who served as pastor in Eilenburg, Saxony during the Thirty Years' War. <coughs> this walled city was a place of refuge for many who were fleeing war and pestilence. As the only pastor of the city, he often buried as many as 40 to 50 people in one day. Yeah. Yet, in spite of this horror, he was able to write this magnificent hymn as a table grace for his family. So Michael Burkhart captures the mood of Thanksgiving with this light, joyful accompaniment played on the eight-foot flute in the manuals, in the hands, and the chorale melody is played on a two-foot pipe with my feet. Now think we all are God.
Jeeps. And now you're going to hear some of my own arrangements. Uh, if you but trust in God to guide you is an arrangement that I wrote probably when I was 18 years old. It's not quite as good as box, or, <laughs> but it's what I did when I was 18. Uh, so I did this in college, and um, a lot of people have set this hymn to, uh, to music. Uh, Bach used it in eight of his 250 cantatas. He also used it in several of his organ chorale settings. Uh, but you get to hear my arrangement of it. So there, uh, this is based on two alternating uh, sections. The A section suggests joy in following God's guidance, and the B is a bold chorale melody depicting hope and strength. <clears throat> the next piece for you I'd like to show you a few more cool features about this instrument so as you notice I was playing sometimes on the top manual top keyboard or the bottom keyboard the swell the grip or the pedal now uh, most organs have five four families of sounds just like this one does uh, you have the general uh, organ sound kind of a, just a fat organ sound. Or you can have a flute sound, which is a little more delicate. Or you can have the string sound, which is a warm sound. Or you can have the reeds, 
which sometimes I'll put on the trumpet. <laughs> uh, or it can add brilliance to what you have already done. So those are the four families in different combinations. Uh, so you get a little idea. So in addition to these engraved sounds that I said the American Eclectic sound had, we have the uh, 99 other sounds from the other different styles. Uh, in addition, there's a library of sounds, okay? There's 55 different organ sounds in addition to those four, four in the four families. Then there are 28 orchestral voices. Um, let me just show a few, that's kind of fun. Um, What's that one? Harpsichord. Very good. Number seven is the harp. When the choir sings a piece, you will hear the harp sound. Or bagpipes. just a blast. It's so much fun. I have not yet played the timpani in church. But that's okay. We'll get to that. So you might be, uh, you can look at the front of your cover too and see some of these if you can't see it. These are, the cool thing about this, these are up to 10 numbers here. They're piston changes. So if I can set any kind of combination up to 10 times that set the whole organ. And then if that's not enough, I have 50 memories. So for this concert, I'm going through seven memories and I'm playing 50 different combinations of sounds for you that I captured there on, on, on these little buttons. If my hands are busy, there you see that, I can do that with my feet and it does the same thing, it captures it with my feet. And you may have seen me do that. So there's all kinds of stuff. This. Uh, uh, so if you want to know more about it, see more uh, things, uh, it, it will play repertoire of beautiful pieces that uh, Rogers have programmed into the instruments. It has a whole library of hymns. So if, if I'm sick, you know, we can train Matthew to come up and play the <laughs> organ and know what buttons to press and we'll just smile and and you have all the hymn settings. So there's a lot of neat things on this instrument. So the next piece um, I'm going to play for you is uh, a little charming piece that I arranged on Blessed Assurance. Uh, the tune is by Phoebe Knapp. The text was by the blind hymn writer Fanny Crosby. So I use syncopated rhythms given the opening and closing sections Kind of a unique, playful added, uh, style to the piece. Some people say, yeah, that sounds almost like a calliope, which was invented in the 1880s and around the time when this piece would have been written. The third stanza is expression of soft and free-flowing middle section, describing the text, perfect submission, all is at rest. And then again, I conclude with the lively hymn tune starting out kind of like the beginning, but much more, having much more energy to it. This is my arrangement of Blessed Assurance. Uh, 
That's okay, darling. <laughs> we'll get it. She's my helpful page turner, supporter, and putting out of music person. I think we got it, huh? Our next arrangement is the God of Abraham praise. Usually I hear this sung in a majestic manner, kind of sounds like a slow German chorale. And then I realized, I looked and said, oh my goodness, this is a Hebrew melody. Maybe I should think about how to set this. So I thought of, hmm, I don't know much about Jewish culture, but uh, I have seen the wedding scene at Pillar on the Roof, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you can picture a little bit of this. So sometimes the, uh, the tune gets going faster and faster. So think of that wedding scene at Fiddler on the Roof. Might, maybe uh, you will conjure up some different types of images of this. So I tried to put it in that context, the God of Abraham prays. <clears throat>
So the next piece is called the South African Trilogy. Uh, I taught uh, at Lancaster Theological Seminary um, music and worship, and also was the chapel organist and dean of the chapel. And so we had uh, African American Week, and I used uh, this setting for their celebration. He uses three freedom songs from South Africa. We shall not give up the fight. Hallelujah, Pelotza Rana, we sing your praises. And Siyahamba, we are marching in the light of God. Some of you may might know a few of those tunes. Mm -hmm. extremely grateful for this organ from the Bissell family. Uh, our other organ died over a year ago and it could not be repaired and so we were starting a little organ fund. We had about $600 and um, the Bissell family came forward. So I'm going to ask Jim to come forward now and say a few words. I've got to tell you, it's just fantastic for us to be here today. Uh, to honor our parents um, on behalf of my brother Steve, my sister Joanne, and my brother Gary, who could not be here today. We're just, we, we, we couldn't be more thrilled, especially to be able to leave a legacy like this, um, to, to make a phone call and to call 
called Bonnie and say, guess what? We've got a truckload of money for you. Uh, it was pretty cool uh, to, to be able to do that. And she said, our, oh, our, our organ is broken. Can we use part of that money? And, and we said, of course. Uh, you know, it, it, it just couldn't have worked out better. And very exciting for us to all be a part of it. Um, uh, and we thank our, our, our mother and father. And to have this uh, plaque and the dedication here for our legacy and for the kids, uh, we have three generations here today. The third generation is doing a pretty good job. Myla, two year old Myla. Uh, uh, thank you everyone for being here of course and, and, and to Bonnie for putting this all together. It, it just couldn't be a, a more thrilling time for us. Thanks. <laughs>
for the Audubon United Methodists in 2004. I wrote this piece because of the wonderful text from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for great God has done great and marvelous things, don't you think? <laughs> yes. And I say amen, amen to that. Shout to God with joy. Shout to God, all you lands. Lift up your voice. Rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. Listen for the harp. Give praise to God with trumpets. Listen for the trumpets. And the sound of the horn. Sing to the Lord a new song. Our celebration choir.
keep standing. <laughs> All right. So it's your turn to sing with this magnificent work, okay? Uh, 476, How Can I Keep From Singing? So in the Black Hymn Book, everyone try to find one. And we're going to let you stand. You're probably tired of sitting anyway, right? Stand, and let's see if we can raise the rafters here as we sing this wonderful song. After that, you may sit down, and I will play three movements based on this hymn, too. How can I keep from singing? 476. Please stand with me if you'd like. I'm going to play the introduction the whole way through, and then you can uh, get the idea of how the tune goes and then sing with us.
of love for him. As he said, I haven't seen him very much. He absolutely loves the organ. And, uh, on Sunday mornings, we have such variety in our music now. It's truly really wonderful. We have a wonderful reception planned for you. Uh, we have wine, cheese, and non-alcoholic beverages will be outside. We have a mister and tents. So just go have a glorious celebration. Thank you, Bissels.